Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is moving day at your 2020 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. My name is Kevin Jones, and I'm with my good friend and teammate, Luke Humphreys. Luke, are you ready to go today? Can't wait to see how these guys shred up Vista. Looking forward to it, Kev. Yeah, me too. So we are on the new course, the second course of this tournament, Vista del Camino. It is a relatively flat course with tons of OB and tons of shots to shape. Um, a little bit more difficult than Fountain, would you say? Yeah, I do think so. Mostly due to the out of bounds and um, just a little longer, I think, than, uh, than Fountain is. Yeah, so we got Vina Makala, Simon Lazat, Kale Leviska, and Drew Gibson on the card today. If you didn't see the scores of the leaderboard, we've got some people just shredding. Um, 14 under is the pace right now, so I don't know. I, I would love to see another 14 under right now. That'd be sweet. Yeah, I think the course record on this layout here is 12, and that was in the, the tournament that took place about a month before this. I believe Adam Hammies set that. Wow. All right. Hole one is a soccer goal hole. That's a triple mando. Most people are opting for a straight mid-range uh, the, the thing that makes this hole difficult is the sloped green to the right. It kind of slopes down to the left, and so sometimes it's easy to land a little bit too soon. Yep, that is the miss. This is a 400G M3 out of Vina. Slight miss release from Vina. Um, that's the other thing about this hole is there is a really low ceiling, obviously, enforced by the soccer goal, but also the limbs come into play very much so too. Simon finding that as well. Yeah, that was a DD3 out of Simon, MX3 out of Kale, mid-range specialist, and he looks to have done it right. Should filter down the hill. Wow. Perfectly done. Yeah. Last player is Drew Gibson, and I believe that is a buzz. Oh, cool. So Drew holding a Discraft disc right now. Nice. No turn to the right. If he dials that in, that's going to be money for him, but that's a tough putt for Birdie. Yep, it is. Looks to have slid pretty well, but uh, still going to be outside the circle, I think. That was a ginormous jump putt from Simon right there. Wow. It would be great to have that in the arsenal. <laughs> it's pretty useful, huh? Yeah. You just never have to worry about the upshots. Vino putting with 350 GPA threes. Lays it up there pretty well. Cool. Vina has a really powerful spin putt. Uh, one of the top spin putters out there easily. Let's see if Drew can get off to a great start from Circle's Edge. Oh, just off the cage it looked like. We had 10 people miss the Mando. Eight of those took double bogeys after missing the Mando too, so it's pretty penalizing when you miss it. I think the drop zone is up there. It's maybe just a shot that these guys didn't play as often, but those... Um, those missed Mandos turn into fives quick. Ouch. Yeah. I guess that if you miss the Mando and you don't get up and down, that's a quick way to take a five, huh? Yeah, bad way to start your round. Shout oh, out for to sure. Nate Sexton banging one outside circle two on this hole. Starting his round off nice. Putter hot. Nice. So Kale Leviska is showing us how it's done with his mid-range. He is the only birdie carded on that hole. So hole two is a par three, 369 feet. Another thing that makes this hole difficult is that sloped green up there to the right side of the basket. These players are going to have to be pretty delicate with whatever they end up throwing, especially if they're throwing the hyzer line. Right, yeah, the low hyzer fairway driver plays pretty well. It's just got to be on hyzer as it meets the hill. If it's too flat, you're not going to get any skip and you'll be left outside the circle. Oh, and that was about as close as you can come to two flat, I would say. Yeah, FX2 out of Kale, um, and he'll be left just outside the circle. Nice. Luckily, that disc caught edge and got him some finish because you, you have to have that finish if you want to sneak inside the circle on the hyzer. Right. Another FX2 out of Vino. Lots of Prodigy guys throwing that FX2. Yeah, it has made a lot of people's backs. That's really cool. That was just a little wide, little low out of Vino. He may have been trying to play the wide hyzer or could have just pulled the low hyzer. You're seeing a little higher hyzer out of Simon here. Preferred route of some people just in front of the tree. Pretty big skip, but he'll have an opportunity. Yeah, good shot from Simon. I feel like when I'm practicing this hole, I for some reason I envision Simon throwing the hole. I feel like I've seen him throw this shot so many times. Yeah, just a smooth hyzer. 
Lots of people opt for the flick, the forehand as well, the righty forehand. But we don't see any of our participants go for that. Drew just basing it. Well done from Drew, and he did it perfectly. In between those two trees by the basket is about the perfect line. Yep, agreed. Low ceiling putt from Vino. Just a, a tough one to bang with the low ceiling. I think uh, he'll be a little disappointed in missing out on the birdie here. Simon, pure. Comfortable putt from Simon. He's putting 88% for the tournament thus far. It's 18th best in the field, but he's putting 43% from circle two, which is third best in the field. So when it when it lands in circle two, Simon's a deadly, at least in this tournament so far. 43% from circle two. That is a really good percentage. Insane. Nice putt from Kale. That's a uh, birdie, I believe. Yeah. Good start. These uh these starting holes are not very difficult. They don't have too much teeth, at least. And you're definitely trying to get a few birdies stacked up really quickly here at the beginning of the round. Yeah, three out of four, kind of the pace you're looking for if you're not trying to get all of them, really. They're, they're just right there in front of you. You know, you're going to have a circle two putt. Yeah, I agree with the three out of four. Hole three, 360 feet, par three. Actually, this is such a similar hole to the last hole. Very similar shot style if you opting for that hyzer. The only real tree to miss is that dead looking tree on the right side. It's kind of hard to hit that because you really need to hit at the base of it. So it's pretty skinny. We do have an elevated basket though, so it could cause some woes on the green. Yep, it does make putting a little bit trickier. This is a great line out of Kale if it gets over that. Oh no, that plays OB, doesn't it? The it does, area. and there's the graphic right there. That's an extreme unfortunate break right there. Yeah, it totally is. That was FX2 out of him, PD2 out of Simon, opting for the big hyzer. Wow, and another shot that I just envisioned Simon throwing in my practice rounds. He did it perfectly there. That's looking like a birdie. Still got a little bit of work to do. Looks like stable putter from Drew. Uh, I think that's faster than a putter. Oh, it does look faster. Okay, yeah. Something overstable fairway. It could, yeah, something like an overstable mm -hmm. fairway driver. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Solid shot, though, from Drew. That's going to be 20 to 25 feet. Let's see what Vina is opting for. It's the FX2 that he threw wide last time. Looks like he made an adjustment, just went a little higher. That was probably the line he was looking for on the second hole and just came out a little low. Great shot from him. Yeah, such a good shot. The, the difficult thing about this hole as Kale lays up for par, is that if you yank your shot too far to the right, you can actually find yourself OB over the fence, really. But then again, if you saw it off left, you're looking at 40, 50 feet with the skip on this bare ground. Yep, and the raised basket, just not making it easy on you, Drew, yep. concentrating. So 50% of the field was able to find circle one in regulation on this hole, which is an incredibly high percentage if you think about it. That's, you know, if we're all putting 80%, you know, eight out of 10 people getting in the circle or hitting it, it's, it's just a really high percentage. This one came in as the second easiest hole on the course. So people looking to capitalize. All right, definitely a factor in that is that there's not much teeth on the hole except for what Kale found. And I actually lied, Kale was not pitching up for par. He he was definitely pitching up for a bogey because he went out of bounds. Vino getting his round started nicely with a two. There we go. Simon finishing off as well. As we see Kale drop in, some of the reason that Kale is playing so well is also his circle one percentage. He's putting 93%. Welcome to 2020. I just want to send a huge thank you out to all of our Innova throwers that have supported the Tour Series program. Every player on Team Star and Champion has a special signature disc available at the Innova Factory store and at retailers around the world. Huge part of what keeps us able to do what we love and be professional disc golfers out there on tour. So thank you so much for supporting it. Hole four, Vista del Camino. 
This is a very disciplined hyzer shot, probably even a stall hyzer, which can make it more difficult depending on what your comfortable angle is. It's definitely more difficult for me than a normal hyzer. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, agreed. The big tree looms. No, you need to take it wide, but out of bounds right also comes into play if you just push it straight and don't hyzer quick enough. Yes, so it's really important to land close to the basket. Simon's just a little angry because he lost the distance he was needing, but he's inbounds. You can't really see the out of bounds lines here, but I'm telling you, you need to be inside the circle to feel any kind of comfort. <laughs> agreed, agreed. They had walls up last year that kept people from skipping out of bounds or from coming back inbounds. Those are gone this year, making it, I'd say, all around a little more difficult. And it's right at circle's edge, the OB is. Vino may have clipped the middle tree. Hard to believe that he would have gone that short um, just off the tee. Drew ripping on the same stable fairway that he did last hole. Looks really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done from him. Kale going to it is 750D1. Turned. That needs to not be too strong. We'll exactly. see. Exactly. There's the OB line you can see. He skips over the corner of it, but plays it well. He'll have a circle's edge putt, and that's just so close to being, you know. Out of bounds, which is a possible two-stroke swing if he makes this putt. But either way, oh, good cool, shot from cool, cool. Kale. Vina looking for it, pin-seeking right there. Yeah, from 60 feet. We talked about Simon's circle two percentage. Let's see what he can do here. A little wide from him. Shout out to Dustin Keegan. He hit a 109-foot putt yesterday for his birdie. I turned around just in time to see it. He was playing in the group behind me and just dead center in the heart. Good on you, buddy. Kale converting for his birdie. Well done. That's two in a row for him. Excuse me. Nope, he got he that bogey, bogey so he's little, kind of yeah. making up for a bogey. Yeah, exactly. Still, right. that's what you got to do. 37% of the field were able to convert on their birdie on this hole. Drew being one of them. Drew actually par. No, he parked it. Parked it there. That was a really good drive from Drew. Same stable fairway as before, as you said. Yeah, just ripping it hard. Hole five, 340 feet, nothing in the way. This is where most people are going to be opting for their straight mid ranges. Um, Nothing special other than there is a mando tree on the right side of the fairway blocking any spike hyzer attempt. I bet Drew's going putter here, but I'm not sure. Yep, I believe that's his Luna. I think he turned it over a little bit. Looks like a circle's edge putt. Okay, so Drew's bagging a Luna this year, huh? Yeah, he is. Cool. It definitely seems like it's a pretty good disc. Yeah, MX3 from Kale. He's been throwing this thing great all week. Look for him to capitalize on a straight hole. Little low, but let's see what the mid range can do. Eh, that's not where you want to be in this elevated basket. Really not. That is, um, you know, he's he's putting it inside circle two at a 63% click. Inside circle one, um, I don't know, excuse me, circle one at 81%, circle two at 63%. Both of those are around top 10, so he's really giving himself the chances. Yeah, and we just saw Simon with a pretty big mistake right there, bringing the Mando tree into play. I'm not sure if he missed it, but either way, that's not any kind of birdie, that's for sure. And Vina also a little bit low. Yeah, he was opting for a 400 PA3 off the tee. I believe it played a bit downwind for this round, so players were, like you said, throwing straight putters and mid-ranges. Did he make the Mando? He must have made the Mando, so... Yeah, that was a group decision. They must have given it to him. Player cool. gets the oh benefit of the doubt. And yeah. Kale just off the front cage. It's a gutsy run from Kale with the basket being so elevated and that tree behind it. Sometimes you can find yourself in a little sticky situation. For sure. Bina is looking this one down too. He needs some kind of chains. Oh, oh, the oh, extension oh. looks so nice. <laughs> that was a clean release. Yeah, the follow through was great. Drew gets it to hold on. Looked like that thing was trying to come out. but 
Yeah, good stick from Drew, giving it a great effort. Converts. Nice birdie. Simon will be able to confirm his score. Looks like he's tapping in for his three. He did make the mando. And he's wearing a sleeve on his, his right elbow. I wonder what that is. I hadn't talked to him about it, but with as much torque. Yeah, it's just like a compression sleeve, so a lot of people are using that this time of year. Today, we'll be talking about the Nuke. The Nuke is a wide-rimmed, fast, maximum distance driver. When throwing on a wide-open course with the Nuke, I'm using it to unleash maximum backhand distance potential. Due to its slim profile and wide rim, the Nuke also fits really well in the hand when throwing sidearms. If I'm looking to throw down some boom sauce, I'm going with the Nuke. You can pick one up at Discraft.com or your local disc golf retailer. Welcome back. It is time for the first par four of the round. Hole six is 600, or I'm sorry, 783 feet. It takes, first of all, a bunch of distance on your drive to get in position to score on this hole. Uh, the basket is surrounded by OB about circle's edge on all sides. So whether you're opting for backhand or sidearm into the screen it's just important that you play it really well because if you end up skipping off too much or if you turn something over you're going to be looking at a pretty pretty certain bogey yeah pressure is definitely on the second shot there is ob left and right on the on the drive but it's not very tight you just need to get yourself out there in a good position there's a few trees in the fairway that kind of come into play depending on um, wow has perfectly played Anheuser from Drew. Good grief. Really difficult shot, but he played it to perfection. Another Anheuser from Kale, and these guys are showing you a, a, a really common play, and that's the Anheuser line. There's also a straight line and a Heiser line as well, so it's whatever you're comfortable with. Simon looks like he's lining up the Heiser. This is my personal play, um, but it definitely takes a good amount of juice to get in position wide it looks but he's sweeping it in over the that tree right there and oh, wow. into scoring position he's gonna have i'd say 400 to 420 feet left yeah i'd agree i hadn't seen that play yet the, the high spike over the right side there is ob basically where he's carrying it over so he's got to be confident in that line bino also opting for the turnover and looks to have done it great. He's getting full flex out of this thing. Good grief. So perfectly played on a, I'd say, four out of five star difficulty shot. Yeah, exactly. If you're turning it over and it comes out early, it almost assuredly is going to find the OB left. Kale, great upshot from him. That's an awesome shot. It's pretty clean over there. But it's just important that you don't turn it over or saw it off because there's a lot of there's a lot of OB around that basket. Like we said, circle's edge. Wow, Simon throwing darts. <laughs> That's Two awesome. Spike Heisers. Interesting way to play this hole. Very nice. I wonder how close he ended up there. Drew doing the same. The they're liking this big high Heiser because it's taking a bunch of the skip out of play. Also throwing a dart. Fino a little lower and leaving it a little shorter. He'll still be looking at a circle's edge putt, but with a, a great drive like that, I'm thinking he'd like to be a little shorter. Simon, a little trouble with the raised basket. Vinyl straddling out, putting 78% circle one, 33% circle two. Both of those are pretty middle of the road. He is hitting almost more fairways than everybody and getting into circle one a lot of the time. So it's his chances that are making him uh, stay up so high. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's hitting putts. Yeah. Great straddle out from him. Very good stats on, on Vina as well. Really interesting to see how often he's getting himself chances. Yeah, there were some teeth on this hole. There was an eight. We had five, seven, five sevens and 12 sixes, 12 double bogeys on this hole. So people find an OB in a bad spot, maybe putting a little more pressure on their next shot and, and not.
not executing. So this this one played as the third hardest hole on the course. First par four, just meeting you with a, uh, a challenge. Drew is going to be taking a par on this hole after missing an inside the circle putt. I'm sure he's a little bit disappointed in that, but still this hole is really hard. Uh, what handicap is this hole, Luke? Yeah, it, it comes in at the third hardest, so people are, you know, they're seeing it. 31 people birdied it, 5 parked it. It only had a 90%, 19% birdie rate. Wow, we got to see one of them from Kale. The other ones, will be, yeah, slightly disappointed with a bunch of good drives like they had. And did Vino birdie that one as well? Uh, he did. He yeah. had a nice straddle putt. Nice. So two birdies on that hole, really good. So after that real difficult par four, we've got one that used to be, I would say, the easiest hole on the course. Um, this is hole seven. It's 645 feet. Uh, this gives a chance for these big arms to really smash something almost as hard as they want with not much consequence. Yeah, exactly. There's just the one added mando tree on the corner there that you see. But um, if these guys throw one anywhere near the fairway, they'll be able to hyzer around that without much trouble. Kale going D1. There's plenty of skip on this. I imagine that's going to get some more distance. Oh, yeah. Another 50, 60 feet. <laughs> All day. And he is leaving himself in a really good spot. This new Mando definitely makes the hole much more difficult. I think it's really strategically placed. You have to be a little bit more specific on your drive. But uh, right side is great. 400 D1 out of Vino. And that was a D Model S Duraflex out of him on the last tee box, the one that went so far. That's the new driver from Prodigy. Um, and it's got some great flight characteristics straight out of the box. Okay. Nice. Drew. Going I, back to that stable fairway, I believe. I, we thought so. It might. I can't imagine anybody's throwing a fairway here, but you never know with Drew, that's for sure. Right. Hugging the left side, he's going to have uh, a little bit of work to do, just like a big skipping hyzer or spike hyzer, depending on what he what he likes. Simon flipping it over, that's a mistake that you don't want to do. Come back. Oh, that was a PD2 out of him. Maybe just got a little more turn than he was looking for. All right, let's see if he can execute a par here. Throwing his FD3 wide of the light, really swinging it in, not messing with the Mando tree. Leaving himself about circle's edge. Yeah, there's worse spots to be. The elevated basket is going to make it somewhat difficult for him. Yeah. But I still expect him to knock down that par. Yeah, it's just not where you want to be for your par putt on this hole. I wonder if that's a FX2 again from Kale. I don't I don't know. It didn't have... I think that was his MX3. I think you're right. Just a... a he, he always opts for that mid-range. He throws it so well. One of the best in the world at that. This is a pretty money spot here for Vina. Now that looked like an A2, A3 approach to That would have been my guess. Yep. Nice. A slower disc, stable, just something that'll turn the corner and sit nice. Now Drew's drive went much further than it looked like. He's getting spiky with it, looking for it to dig. It does perfectly. Well played from Drew. Kale just inside the circle. Putting with the P Model S. Look like some right to left wind might have lifted it just a little bit. It looked like it was in the middle and then just never came down. I think so, Luke. So Simon here trying to save his par after going OB on his drive. This is a really important putt because I know he's considering this as one of the more like routine birdies. Yes, definitely one of the more gettables on the on the course. And it oh. rises on him. Going to tap in a five. Yeah, surprising. It's the mistake off the tee. Um, really the only thing that you can do on this hole to uh, keep yourself from getting that birdie opportunity. Nice, nice birdie from Drew there. I really like his outfit too, but I am definitely biased. My favorite color is orange. So 51% of the field got the birdie on this. 59% were able to put it in circle one in regulation.
Nico is leading the field in getting in circle one in regulation at a 74% click. Wow. Impressive. So many chances he's giving himself. And if you keep on doing that, you'll eventually knock him down. That would explain why I've seen him on the putting, on the, on the basket after about every round. Yeah. Yeah, figuring his putters out. He switched to west side this year. I think he's still just getting everything dialed in, but we expect him to be playing at the highest caliber. Last year, he was uh, second place at the USDGC, so he's playing fantastic golf. Yeah, it's good to see that he's uh, giving himself that circle one in regulation very often. That's a super important stat. Hole eight, par three, 360 feet. Nothing too crazy other than you're going over water the whole time. Yep. Luke, are you throwing mid-range here? Yep, that's what I'm opting for. I'm actually opting for your signature M3. Nice. It's been going good for me. Yeah, it's a really good disc for this hole. And um, Vina just skips on. He also went with an M3. He'll okay. be left with about a circle's edge putt. Drew opting for a Luna. Luna, that is a little more my style in this hole. You don't have to power down. And you definitely don't have to really worry about going too long. I think that's a really good play from Drew. Yep, and he executes great. MX3 from Kale. Looking for another straight mid-range shot. I like this play from Kale, too. I expect this to be close, good. even though I said that after he threw it. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. The he threw that so well. The MX3 is like, in my opinion, it's like a longer putter. There's not so much fade on it. It just kind of holds whatever line you put it on, and it has good stability, so it fights wind well as well. Super spike out of Simon. You'll see the big arms doing that sometimes, and that's played well. Yeah, perfectly. I do see that quite often. Let's see, Vina. Can you keep up the hot putter? I like the focus. Taking his time. Lots of times there's groups of people walking around behind this green. It can be a really distracting putting surface. This one definitely can because there's a tee box on one side and a basket on the other, and then people have to walk right by to get to the next hole. Unfortunately, Vinut did miss his birdie attempt. Drew looks close enough to cash this one in, though. We had 44 OBs on this hole, and only three of those were able to save their par of those three all hit putts of over 45 feet okay so the people that are saving par on this are definitely the not the people landing in the water right right but they're all hitting nice putts that was cool to see very cool 37 percent of the field birdied it in case we got some stat heads out there fine a little longer comebacker than he would have liked but drains it. Yep. I like that he's taking his time. Those putts are kind of the annoying ones. Sometimes they can get away from you. Mm -hmm. You just have to produce more focus than you were planning on at yep. the end of the day. Because you know? like 30 seconds ago, he's thinking, I'm going to get a birdie on this hole. And then all of a sudden, darn, I have to focus kind of a little bit harder for this par. Yep, exactly. Hole nine. What are you doing here? The final hole of our front nine. And I'm going for the pin. But I, I know I've thrown out of bounds way more times on this hole than I have even given myself a putt. So, you know, if I really want to be a smart disc golfer, I might consider laying up next year. We'll see. Um, it's 482 feet. The, the park at play is to throw a really flat shot over these trees. You need some turn to the right to get the distance. Um, but and, not too much. But not too much, because if you lose it to the right, you're going over the path, and that's going to be a bogey. Instant four. That's a mid-range. Are you kidding me, Drew? That's a buzz. Oh, my gosh. It was just lacking a bit of height. I think it had the right line. Crazy. This came in as the second hardest hole on the course. Now, Kale is throwing a mid-range as well, it looks like, except I think Drew is going for the pin. Kale is definitely trying to get a three. Stop. Ah, that's what makes the layup tough on this hole. There's really no easy way to get into the grass. You either have to go over the top or underneath, and the water comes into play, both of them. Simon, that's out of bounds all day. I wonder if he crossed over the water it looks like he or i'm sorry the, the land it looks like he probably will get a spot up there either way it's not going to affect much because that's that's looking like a bogey yeah 
didn't make it close enough to the basket to have like some kind of circle's edge putt or anything. Right. 400 D1 out of Vino. That's a go. good move. That's what you want to see. Get over the tree. It needs to. It needs to. Okay. Ah, uh, just got the one behind the one. It looked like he got over. There's a few of them. Um, great shot from Kale. This can get tricky. This green is super fast, and that water is really close. So it takes all of your concentration to put that one. And he does it well. Final looking to jump putt his approach here. Well done from him. Yeah, taking a three on this hole is fantastic. There were only four twos on this hole all day long, and only one of those twos parked it. If you guys guess who parked it, one of you guys is going home with the Signature Series Kevin Jones M3. All right. So put the comments, put the guesses in the comments below. We will pick a winner based on your correct answer, and uh, we'll contact you and get that thing shipped your way. Yes. Cool deal. Simon taking a bogey, unfortunately. And Kale also taking a bogey. I know he's not too stoked about that, considering he's playing for three. Right, throwing the mid-range off the tee. I think Simon, on the other hand, he knows his consequence. If he doesn't execute the shot, he's probably taking a bogey, and that's what happened. Vina with a three down as well, tied with Kale. Um, a little bit cleaner, though. No bogeys for Vina. Yep, so you're seeing this course play a little harder than Fountain Hills. Um, five under is the best score on this nine and, and it's honestly not that bad of a score i think 10 is a great score it'll put you in uh contention and in reach of the win yeah 10 down total is is awesome you're lighting this course up honestly five down through the front really good there were our leaders and we really appreciate you guys joining us for this front nine coverage next up we're gonna have the back nine really hope you guys enjoyed this commentary brought to you by prodigy disc and we hope to see you on the back nine